President Obama has tried his hardest to convince you that he's saved our economy and put Americans back to work. Hey, let's talk about the economy. Things seem to be getting better, seem to be improving. Well, the economy is growing. We've made the tough choices required, not just to help the economy recover, but to rebuild it on a new foundation for stronger, more durable economic growth. With the economy picking up speed, companies say they intend to hire more people this year. We are at a moment when our economy is growing. So in a lot of ways, things are looking up. Now, we spent the past five and a half years fighting back from the worst economic crisis in our lifetimes. The good news is our economy is growing again. Hi, Poppy. But new grim numbers out today tell a very different story. America's GDP has just suffered a dramatic drop of nearly 3% in the first quarter. The greatest plunge for our economy in five years since the recession ended. Do I get paid extra for that? So is all that talk about a recovery from our president just that? Talk, Greg, since you're not paying attention and you're <laughs> and you're terrorizing me with a slow it showed Loris. Buddy, showed buddy that it's, it's slow. It's slow Loris week. So it's I have a slow Loris with slow me. Loris slow Loris Wednesday. Slow Loris is like the economy. <laughs> yes, it is, but not as adorable as a slow Loris. And what was the question? But he's creeping along he like creeping the economy, along. feeling a little sluggish, perhaps needing some vitamins and yeah. some fiber in his diet. Sorry to derail this. What do you make about this? What's going on? Well, if America were a, if the American economy were a car, Obama took a Corvette and turned it into a gremlin. But this has always been his plan. A smaller America, in his mind, does less damage. It was never about a carbon footprint. It was about an American footprint. And he's lopping it off toe by toe. This is not a big deal. To, Amer to Obama, America's a fat guy who needs a lap band, and Obama is that lap band. How's was that? that a Christie thing? Do you think about those no. things all okay. the time? I actually prepare for the show, Bob. All right, well, let's, let's, go, to the, I know. <laughs> let's go to the business <laughs> expert. Who knows what GDP stands for? Bowling. Yeah, gross domestic product. Here's the deal. <laughs> 2.9% drop is the worst in five years, and that's that's far worse than anyone thought it was going to be. So, and then you had things like, you know, 15% poverty, the worst in 30 years or 40 years, I think that number is. 46 million people on food stamps, the worst ever. So there are th here's what's going on. So you wake up and you see this number, and you expect the stock market to crash, right? Mm -hmm. Wrong. The stock market went up today, which tells you there's a disconnect. Everyone continues to look at that stock market and say, hey, things must not be that bad. Problem is, they are that bad. There are three markets in the economy. There's a stock market, yes, but there's a job market and a housing market. The job market sucks. The housing market is okay, not, not good, not bad, certainly not on fire. And, and, and the only thing that's really working is that stock market, and they keep hanging their hat on the stock market. The problem is, the retail investor, the, the the guy on Main Street is not invested in the stock market. There's a bunch of bozos downtown making millions upon mil billions of dollars, but the rest of us aren't. And, and, and a lot of people are going to point the finger and say, Bowling, you used to work down there. Well, I wasn't really a, a, a Wall Street trader. I, was, I, I, did, I did oil and gas. I bought and sold oil and gas. I, that's where my world was. But there's a disconnect right here. It's Isn't not fair. It? The American people aren't benefiting from, from the trillions of dollars that we're throwing into it, they're throwing at it. The stock market is, and that's really not fair. I oh. did gas. You, you okay. did? Yes. You have? That was weird. Bob, um, did yeah. anything Eric say at all make you smile when it, he was it always, it always makes you smile. for a second? I, I, what I really was thinking about was going to get my Prozac uh, uh, prescription refilled. While you were bored? No, 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 because it's so depressing. Oh. Uh, listen to you. I mean, it's not hard to find a bunch of clips of Obama saying the economy is going. What do you want him to do? Say it's not or it's terrible? Of course not. You could do that with any president. Is it just been a bad quarter? Yeah, it's been a bad quarter. Revised, terrible quarter. But it has had some good quarters. So I, I don't I just don't buy the notion that somehow if you listen to this, that the economy is crashing. It's not crashing. So I, I just it doesn't it doesn't make me wake up and get scared like Gary. Okay, well, I don't think he's scared. But I Dana, do. Dana, so what do you think here in terms of the communication? The president's got a little bit of problem because he is on a lot of sound saying the economy's getting better, getting rid of it, et cetera. However, it doesn't necessarily bear true with the numbers. If you're advising him, how do you tell him to handle this so that he still has credibility with the American people and at the same time is able to perhaps pump up, restore some confidence? One of the things I tried to do today was to provide some logic, okay? So they'll say that last year, companies built up a lot of their inventories, and over the winter, which was a very difficult winter, they also were drawing down, so that's, uh, drawing down those inventories, therefore, blow. that actually, that message, that while it might be true, it just does not penetrate to people who think 
that, that important number. Does the president care about the things I care about? Is the president able to lead the country? Majorities of all the polls say the answer is no. The other interesting thing is, yes, the economy is growing, like limping along. Mm -hmm. that, the president has said that wasn't good enough, except for his policies, the consequences of them are that this is the result is the economy that we have. In addition, this is interesting to me. We are now in the 60th month of an expansion. Since 1980, we have not had an expansion that lasted more than 74 months. The president already is in a lame duck presidency. He doesn't have a lot of new th ideas on the table. Today, the right. president of the United States spent a significant amount of his time talking about climate change. Significantly, one of the most uh, under, <laughs> uh, the, the thing that Americans say they care the least about, that's what he's spending his time on today. Uh, can, can I ask, this is not an argument, a serious question. Why does the stock market continue to go up at this stage so bad? Throwing, well, they were throwing $85 billion per month into the stock market, just throwing at it, print, printing it, borrowing from the Treasury and saying, here, here's $85 billion. So a lot of people on Wall Street are making a lot of money. Here's why Main He said the money that they're dumping in isn't the fact, going in the yeah. right direction. So it's the, going they, to the they, people who no, already it, have it. It only went to banks that were allowed to take money from the Fed. Right. It was a huge b banking institutions that were making free money. They were giving the banking institutions free money. They, say, they said they were doing it to make sure we didn't have another financial meltdown. Right. Here's why Main Street doesn't feel this. Gasoline prices are up 100% over Obama, $1.83 to 368 369 right, right now, yep. 100%. At the same time, under President Obama, incomes, median household incomes are down. People, Main Street is getting squeezed. Higher prices, lower incomes. Everyone else, yeah, at the upper end, everyone's great on Wall Street. That's fantastic. Rich people are getting right. richer, no doubt. The middle class is getting absolutely squeezed out of the economy. And you know what I'm upset and worried about? Hill and Bill. Bill and Hill, because they seem to still be dead broke, despite all of this money being pumped into the economy. How has this happened? Take a listen to both of them. We came out of the White House not only dead broke, but in debt. Uh, we had no money when we got there, and we struggled to you know, piece together the resources for mortgages, for houses, for Chelsea's education. You know, it was not easy. It is factually true that we were several million dollars in debt. I think I had the lowest net worth of any American president in the 20th century when I took office. We've got a good life and I'm grateful for it. But I still, we go to our local grocery store on the weekend. We talk to people in our town. We know what's going on. Regular folks, Regular folks like you and me and... Bob Beckel, kind of, sort of. Bob, what's the you don't like this either? Can you at least come clean uh, well, on I'm, it? I mean, come on, uh, give it to me. It, it, it breaks my heart, the situation that they're in. I, I, uh, oh my God. I <laughs> just really? don't get why, honestly, they're too smart politically. I know both of these people. They're smart politically. To say these kind of things, knowing full well that the average American is out there looking at you making two hundred fifty thousand dollars a speech, and saying, "I don't blame him for making two fifty a speech," but the yeah. idea of trying to make yourself sound like you're going to the local Chinese uh, 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 family dollar store? No, no, family dollar. They go to that. <laughs> no, but to the, the That's dry save. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's it, it's a little hard for me to b imagine Bill going to a dollar store. I, I don't know. He needs to take the heat off her by sleeping with a cheerleading squad so they can what? stop looking at her because her personality, personality is like a bad knee. When she's going slow, everything's fine. But when she starts kicking up, she collapses. They need a knee replacement. Oh, my God. The party does. She gets $250,000 per speech. That's about ten grand per creepy laugh. Okay, you're a big fan, I can tell. But this is pretty sad at this point, and they are politically savvy. They're people who have done very well in the game. They know how to spin it, especially Bill. Here's the one thing I like. At least he's trying to defend his wife. That's as far as I can it, say. It wasn't they're helpful, living, boy. They're living in the 1990s. That's so, the problem. So here's a little advice for someone who may want to run for president in 2016. How about instead of being apologetic and deceptive about your wealth, mm -hmm. embrace it. Say and you're say, a winner. Look, how fantastic is the American free market system that someone like me who can grow up, I, I think, in Illinois and then meet someone in, in Arkansas, end up possibly in the White House worth $100 million. So I think because that's what, look what happened to Mitt. The media will eat you alive if you're a Republican anyway. Well, but, but can you imagine if she said that? All of a sudden you get all those maybe, you know, people who are on the fence about Hillary Clinton saying, you know what? She really does care about business. Yeah. Maybe that is the person. But embrace the system that allows you to have $100 million a couple years out of all. But you, you see, know? that would require sincerity and discipline, which to me has not been... Ex 
that's not been the example of the past couple of weeks. Well, let's also make clear about Mitt Romney. He did not answer his questions well. He did not embrace his wealth. He kept trying True. to make, you know, corporations are people. Well, too. he felt I mean, a little uncomfortable about it. But I think Bowen's yeah, got I mean, the right approach. Just be like, I'm a winner. I want you to be a winner, too. Let's do this. Put me in the White House and let's figure out ways to make everybody who, a little bit richer. Elect the president's broke? richer. What? Who wants to elect a president? Nobody does. The Dems love have an that. Economy that's no, bad, and then yeah, have do. somebody who had a bunch of money and then that's lost you, it. That's no. how you destroyed Mitt Romney because he was a rich guy. But well, guess but, what? But the media did. had no problem trying to destroy Mitt Romney. But look at the squirmer, like David Gray, like eesh, everyone's uncomfortable because the Clintons aren't doing what they well, hoped they would do. Listen Mitt to this. Mitt Romney was a bad candidate. Simple as that. I think the tension has come from the fact that Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton in many ways see themselves as the couple from Arkansas who came into Washington. And in all those intervening years, they have made a lot of money. And perhaps she just chose her words wrong and not offering the context that the president said uh, should be offered even in the question. So the reality is that people can accept this wealth uh, and not make a judgment about whether she is out of touch. I mean, it doesn't matter what they say or do because the excuses will help cushion the fall. Eric, I had to cut you off a second. Yeah, so don't forget, Bob, don't, 2012, 2011, 2010, 2011, uh, Occupy Wall Street, you know, villainized wealthy people, successful people. So on, in 2012, they had to do that. They had to set up that class warfare struggle saying Mitt Romney's one of those evil one percenters. Now, all of a sudden, that's not necessarily the case. Now you have a $100 million couple right here who may run for president. Guess what? I haven't heard class warfare bubble up in the last year these, or so. As I go back to say, these are two very good politicians. Why they're mired in this issue about the money they make is beyond me. I mean, there's a lot of things you could talk about. They're it, phonies. Huh? They're phonies. They're lying. That's why it's not working, and we're tired of it. No, but, 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 they're, why, but they're phonies. why would they feel necessary to lie? That's what I don't get. I don't understand why. The, the Clintons, why would they lie? I, no, They're actually, so honest. But it's not a, it's <laughs> not a lie if you believe it, yeah. right? Okay, so that's how that's their perception of themselves, and I think that's what the disconnect is. I think that is I think that's what David Gregory was trying to say. And if I were the Clintons, I'd say, oh, I should listen to him because he's got better answers than we have on mm -hmm. this. I want to make a, a point about something sure. else, though. So Hillary Clinton opened this can of worms, okay? Mm -hmm. And now what's going to happen until she decides, or if she does decide to run, every time she gives a big speech, there's going to be attention on it. That won't matter so much if it's being given to a big bank or Goldman Sachs or whatever. But when is the University of Nevada, Las Vegas? Right. And Hillary Clinton has a speech there where she is um, said to be paid $225,000 for one From speech. From a corporate donor. From a corporate donor, right, at a university where the students are having trouble dealing with the tuition hikes. Right. And they're all going to leave there with $29,000 in student loan debt. They won't make $225,000 in the first several years when they leave college after having to pay off that debt and try to deal with, you know, getting started in life. And so I think it becomes increasingly difficult for her to try to separate herself out from this. Is she a candidate or is she not? I actually think the clock has sped up to the point that she will have to make a decision earlier right. than people than people anticipated. Well, they're they're uh, going to go it back. Was, that was last, the next time you know, I talked to us. one of her yeah. very close advisors right. in Texas, been with her from the beginning last night. I said, what is going on here? Mm -hmm. I mean, you just look at the tape, Roy. Yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't look at this. You, you're too smart. <laughs> John, John Doe. Not. John Doe. But, but anyway, she said, everybody's piling on her. I said, wait a minute. She's the one who said they were dead broke. Why would you, it, once you've got that can out, then put a top on it and say, you know, I said I was dead broke. That was really silly. You know? <laughs> right. I mean, but Roy, now, thanks for that the, the media will forgive them if they do that. They All will. right. We got a lot. We've been chatting here today on Slow Laura's Wednesday. Wait.